Howdy folks, you're watching Deuce, and today I'm not going to show you a mowing video, but I do have some, some jobs to do around the farm. I got my F-250 out here. I also have to change the oil on the F-250, so I figured what I'll do is change the oil on the F-250 and point out to you guys all the problems I've had with my F-250, because I have treated it like, well, like a farm truck, and it has broken like a farm truck. So, let me tell you how I fixed my farm truck. Okay, so we can find some rags here to clean myself up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be going in and out of the truck. Let's see here. I uh, got my oil. I'll be using, go to Motocraft here. It's very good stuff. Let's be the other side of the truck. There we go. Nice. Ooh, it's a fresh one too. <laughs> All right, now, let's take a look at how I have broken my F-250. Just to recap, for those of you who are not familiar with my channel, my F-250 is a 1997. Yes, there was a split year in 1997. This is a old body style 1997 F-250. If I need to buy parts for it at AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts or anything, I have to tell them, I'm kind of cut off here. I have to tell them this is 96 instead of 97. Because if I ask for 97 parts, I will get the new body style Ford F-250. And that does not fit this particular model. It's an old body style 1997 F-250. It's got the 7.3 liter diesel engine, automatic transmission. Uh, let's see, it's heavy duty. Very few, very few bells and whistles. It's got roll down windows. <laughs> it had air conditioning. That's one of the things I'm gonna talk about. All right, let's get to work here. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to focus on the things I broke and had to repair, not normal maintenance. Of course, air filter, fuel filter, uh, batteries, that's normal maintenance. Of course, oil changes, all that good stuff. Normal maintenance, I'm gonna ignore that. Things I have broken. Okay, number one, the AC compressor. About uh, two, three, four years ago, I can't remember, I've had this truck forever. But several years ago, I was, I was hauling butt down the highway and what I imagine was a grenade going off inside the truck or inside the truck, uh, the, the engine bay. And then I heard a whipping sound, like Indiana Jones style whipping sound. So I'll pull over as quick as I can. And it turns out that the air compressor seized up completely, snapped the belt, and the belt had tied itself around the fan or around, you know, around the fan or fan clutch. This is an old school fan clutch, not an electronic fan and was just whipping and just beating the bejesus out of the inside of this engine bay. <laughs> so I'll pull over, I uh, basically just take off the belt and get it back home as quick as possible before it starts overheating because that's a serpentine belt. It drives everything, including the alternator, including the water pump. Now my fix for that, as you can see, is I took off the, uh, the clutch there. I thought it would, might've been the clutch itself, but it was not. It was the compressor itself completely just seized up and just rock solid. I don't really need air conditioning. I don't care about air conditioning that much. I mean, it does get hot. Yes, I can take it. I grew up without air conditioning. If you sneak down the back there, you can see that the water pump is also new. I replaced that at about 170,000 miles. So 30,000 miles ago, 35,000 miles ago, I replaced that. And along with that, of course, the new serpentine belt. Well, uh, I replaced the serpentine belt when I lost the AC clutch or the AC. And along with that, you change out your thermostat that sits underneath this little tube right here, I highly recommend to just buy a new tube because you will never get that to seal back. The old thermostat housing tube, just replace it. Trash it, replace it. It costs like 10 or 15 bucks and it's well worth the hassle or lack thereof. The vacuum pump, I did a video on that. The vacuum pump completely went out on me and left me stranded without, not stranded without brakes because I got the, I got the balls to drive this truck without brakes. Was it smart? Probably not. But the vacuum pump went out on me. Very easy repair, very easy fix. I've got a video on that. I've got a video on a lot of these actually. Nestled underneath the water pump is the crank position sensor. I, I'm not gonna show you that. I'll show a picture of what it looks like here. But mine, it's just, it's buried underneath there. It's hard to get to and hard to show on camera. But it sits right underneath the water pump. Actually, the, it sits right underneath the weep hole of the water pump. So about six months after my water pump went, the crank position sensor went as well. 
I was at highway speed when it completely just shut down the engine. When the engine can't figure it out, can't figure out where the crank is, she just shuts down. Now the crank position sensor is a easy cheap fix. Well, it's not super cheap, but it's cheap enough. Do not go aftermarket. The Chinese knockoff versions do not last at all. I was warned by that by many, many people online and I followed their advice, paid a little extra, got a Ford product and it has been rock solid for a couple years now. Located right on top of the valley of the engine because this is a V8 configuration diesel is the fuel filter, fuel filter housing, fuel bowl, whatever you want to call it. And on the side there, let's see right there. I oh mean, that thing's so hot. That is the, there we go, zooming in there. It's a little brass, little brass nut right there, a brass uh, plug. That is where, oh, come on, focus. That is where the water in the fuel sensor goes. Well, mine started leaking like an SOB. I don't really care about a sensor telling me there's water in the fuel because I just drain it anyway every now and again. There's the, there's a latch right there to drain it. So you, you drain the water out of the fuel bowl on occasion. I just do it randomly whenever I feel like it. Never had a problem. But the sensor is pretty expensive. The sensor is not cheap. So what I did was remove the sensor, throw it in the trash, and then replaced it with a brass plug. That's a, I think it's a quarter inch um, national pipe thread plug. And it just threaded right in. I don't think I even put any sealant on it or anything, any kind of silicone or anything. I just threaded it in and it's been rock solid ever since. That was the first repair I did on this truck about 10, 12 years ago. Nestled right under the turbo. You can see the turbo back here. It looks more impressive than it is. It's a pretty small turbo, honestly. If I can get this cannon to figure out how bright it and dark it is. Okay, there we go. There's a the turbo. Underneath that is the fuel pump. The fuel pump, it's a mechanical fuel pump that's run off of the camshaft. And it is, a, it is a beast, it is a bear to get to, but it is down there. You gotta take off all this right here. I personally left the turbo in place and just worked underneath it. But the fuel pump's down there, it's mechanical. It's, a, it's not too hard of a fix, but you do have to make a few tools. You have to bend a, I can't remember, it's an inch and a quarter, I think it's an inch and a quarter wrench, open and box wrench. And you gotta bend that a little bit, bend about a 20 or 30 degree angle on the handle. So heat it up, bend it in a vise and that will be able to get that completely tightened up. There's a nut down there, there's a procedure. Just trust me, that's what you gotta do. There's a close up of the pumper right there. Again, you can see this is 1997 model pickup. Now most old body style F series pickups have dual tanks. Usually you have a smaller tank in the back and a larger tank up front. And there is a switch inside, open her up here. You can choose which fuel tank you wanna take fuel out of. Well, this now does nothing because the valve, there's a valve that sits right about here. Well, it's on a frame rail, but there's a, there's a valve in there. And that's what that actuates on, that, that lever in there actuates that valve. Well, that valve died on me and suddenly my engine started lugging and then died on me. And it took me forever to figure out this issue because I thought it was a fuel filter, nope. Thought it was bad, bad diesel, nope. Thought it was a fuel pump again, nope, fuel pump was fine. So what happened was the valve completely just shut down and I, I didn't take it apart. I should have taken it apart to figure out what was wrong with it, but I, it's still in there. The faulty valve is still in there. I bypassed the faulty valve. I just basically plumbed in a new fuel line from the, from the fuel pump to the front tank. The front tank is I think a 20 gallon, 18 or 20 gallon tank. What's funny is the fuel gauge, the, uh, the amount of fuel you have in your tank also runs off that valve. And since I had to unplug that valve so it had nothing to do with the tanks anymore, I, uh, I have to basically go by miles on my tank. I, I, can't, I don't have a sensor in the tank telling me if i am got a half tank, quarter tank, three quarter tank. I have no idea. I just reset the, the trip miles on my odometer every time I fill up and I get about 350 or so miles per, per tank. Uh, the front ball joints on these trucks, the F-250s eat them like candy. <laughs> they, they do not last very long. Well, they, they do last a while, but all these trucks are old. The, I mean, this is from 1997. This is, it's almost ready for an antique tag. <laughs> Can you imagine me putting, a, putting an antique tag on my 97 F-250? Ball joints get old and they get rattly and they get loose and they become dangerous. So both the ball joints have been replaced. There's probably that second set 
of new ball joints, I believe. Now, right underneath this vacuum pump right there, there's the power steering pump. There we go, that line right there, that's the high pressure pump or the high pressure hydraulic pump for the, for the uh, power steering. And that completely crapped the bed on me one time. I was actually at the shooting range and I turned left, turned right, and suddenly had no power steering. So I drove it home after my shooting session, I drove it home without power steering. It was kind of a beast to drive home, but I got it home and then changed it out. It's like a $20 part. It's a very simple, very cheap fix, but it is alarming when suddenly you have no power steering in an F-250. Like is my normal fashion, I completely forgot to bring a funnel, so I've got to make one. And while putting on my oil filter, I remembered I also did the brakes, both front and rear. I just did like I did the front rotors because front rotor, rear drum. I did the front rotors, I replaced them along with the brake pads. In the rear, I left the stock drums. The drums were in fine shape and I just replaced the pads in the back. Of course, all the springs as well. Whenever you do drums, just replace all the springs. It's much, much easier. All right, let's see if I can get this without spilling too much onto the engine. And of course, I forgot something. I uh, remembered it while I was editing the video. I also had to unplug the exhaust back pressure valve, I believe that's what it's called, but it's a little valve that sits on a turbocharger and it restricts the turbocharger while the engine is warming up, it just basically protects the engine. I just unplugged it because it was, it was never sensing the engine being warmed up properly. So I just unplugged it and it gave all my stock power back. I did that about a year ago or so. I got a video on that as well. But the, that's the quick, the quick dirty uh, fix is just to unplug it and then be careful with the engine. Just don't floor it until it's warmed up. Simple as that. So that's everything I've broken and fixed on my F-250. I probably also need to do something about the transmission. The transmission is fine now, but it's got 200,000 miles on it. I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I hate dealing with transmissions. It's got an automatic transmission, which I hate. I wish it wasn't a stick shift, but it's not. I'm contemplating trying to at least change the fluid in the transmission. Maybe just let it burn itself out and then throw another one in. I don't know. Leave your comments about that. Those of you who know more about automatic transmissions, let me know about that because that's one thing that I do not have a, a full grasp on how to, how to repair except for just replacement. Well, guys, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, give me a like and go subscribe. A lot more is on the way. If you want to stay on Deuce and Guns channel, go ahead and click on one of these two videos right here, and that will keep you watching on the Deuce and Guns channel. I have a whole playlist about the F-250, by the way, on there. And if you have any comments, questions, or show ideas, or ideas about my transmission, because it's fine now, but how do I get as most miles as possible out of that automatic transmission? Leave that in the comment box below the video. As always, you guys have a great day. See ya.